Have you ever wondered why cells are small or if there's an upper limit to how large an organism can be? This video explains surface area as it relates to volume. We are showing this to help you understand that the shape and structure of everything from fish gills to coral reefs and even our intestines are largely determined by the surface area to volume ratio of these structures. These unique appendages, traits, anatomical structures, and even man-made products such as a car radiator and air filter look the way they do because of a mathematical relationship between their surface area and volume. We'll describe what this means and soon you'll start noticing similarly designed structures in your everyday life. The surface area to volume ratio is represented in different ways. One of the most common ways is when surface area is in the numerator, or the top of the fraction, and is divided by the volume in the denominator, the bottom of the fraction. You will also see this ratio expressed as SA colon V, using a colon to represent the word ratio between surface area and volume. This is a demonstration of auger cubes made with an acid-base indicator called phenothaline. You will see how acid diffuses into each cube at the same rate, changing the color from magenta to clear over time. As the cubes increase in size from a side length of one centimeter to four centimeters, the volume of the cube increases faster than the surface area. We start this demonstration by placing the auger cubes in the acid and letting the experiment run for 15 minutes while making careful observations about the color of the cubes. After five minutes, 10 minutes, and finally 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, we cut the cubes in half. Notice how the color change in the small cube is complete. There is no magenta remaining. This is because the acid in the beaker was able to diffuse all the way into the smallest cube by moving from high concentration to low concentration. For the larger cubes, there was less surface area relative to volume within each cube. That's why we saw magenta in the larger cubes, but not in the smallest cube after the experiment was complete. Now let's do some math. Here, we'll just look at the data from our experiment. The smallest cube with the one centimeter sides had a surface area of six square centimeters and a volume of one cubic centimeter. This yielded a surface area to volume ratio of six to one, or just six. For the largest cube, with 4 cm sides, the cube's surface area was 96 square centimeters and the volume was 64 cubic centimeters. This largest cube's surface area to volume ratio was 3 to 2 or 1.5, which is smaller than the 6 to 1 ratio for the smallest cube. As you can see, as we increase cube size, we had less surface area relative to the volume of the cube. Another way to see this relationship is by looking at consecutive values for surface area and volume. For example, for the surface area to get from a value of 6 to 24, you had to multiply by 4. However, for the volume to get from 1 to 8, you had to multiply by 8. Therefore, surface area increases at a slower rate than volume. We can also look at the graph on the right. If you look at the increase in surface area relative to volume, you see that volume increases much faster than surface area as the cube gets larger. This relationship is not only true for cubes, but also for spheres, cylinders, and a variety of other shapes that we see in the world around us. Does this even matter? Why or why not? So why is the surface area to volume ratio important for living organisms? You've seen that surface area increases at a slower rate than volume for most shapes. This mathematical relationship is the reason why trees have long, thin roots, why the brain is folded and not smooth, why many organisms have gills, and why foxes and elephants have enormous ears in the desert. Organisms have tissues like lungs, kidneys, and blood vessels with large surface areas relative to volumes to allow for complete and rapid diffusion of heat or vital nutrients like blood and air. For every living thing, cell size must be small, like the smallest cube in our experiment so that diffusion of molecules like hormones, enzymes, and oxygen occurs quickly, allowing these resources to have their intended effect. Can you think of some examples of the surface area to volume relationship in your own life?